All right, now we get into scarier stuff. You did some of this in intermediate algebra and um, some I admit will be a, a few problems are actually going to be college algebra problems. So we're going to start with function arithmetic. Number one. We're given that f of x equals negative 2x plus 6 and g of x equals x squared plus 8. Those are two different functions and we're going to operate on them. How are we going to operate on them? Well, here's what we're being asked to do. We're being asked to multiply f of 7 times g of 7. What does that mean? It means I have to find f of 7 and then I have to find g of 7. Well, f of 7 is going to put a 7 in for this x right here. So I'll have negative 2 times 7 plus 6, which will be negative 14 plus 6, which will be negative 8. You can always do that on your calculator. G of 7, we're going to have let me get this out of the way. We're going to have 7 squared plus 8. 7 squared is 7 times 7 plus 8. Always multiply first. So this will be 49 plus 8, which will be 57. All right, I have g of 7, I have f of 7. Now what they want me to do is they want me to take f of 7 and multiply it by g of 7. So all I have to do really, even though this looks incredibly awful, all I really have to do is just take negative 8 and multiply it by 57. And it would be a lot harder if I didn't have a calculator with me, but I do. So let's clear this. Negative, remember I have to, uh, I have to hit the negative sign. Negative eight times, is that 57? Yes. Negative 8 times 57. I get negative 456. Which is indeed their answer. So what did we do? I had to evaluate F for X equals 7 and I had to evaluate G for X equals seven. I got those two numbers, and then I had to multiply them together because the question is, take F of seven and multiply it by G of seven. Okay, number two, we're going to subtract functions. You'd think that would be easier than multiplying, but it's actually more dangerous. We've got f of x equals negative 5x plus 3, and g of x equals x squared minus 3. And this time, we're told to do this g minus f 
of x. What the heck does that mean? All it means, this is just a new way to you of writing this, which is you take g of x and then you subtract f of x. And you can do that. All of that, you've done this before in beginning algebra, intermediate algebra. These are two polynomials and you have subtracted polynomials before. So we're just going to do it again. We're going to take g of x and we're going to subtract f of x. So g of x is x squared minus 3. And we're going to subtract f of x, which is negative 5x plus 3. OK, well. I'm going to pull this over so I can make it a little larger. Make sure everybody can see. I'll have x squared minus 3, and then I have to subtract this. So when you subtract more than one term in parentheses, you treat this minus sign as though it's a negative 1, and you distribute it to the first term, and you distribute it to the second term. So you'll have negative 1 times negative 5x, that's plus 5x. Negative 1 times positive 3 is negative 3. Now we're going to combine like terms. We'll have x squared, and then polynomials are written in descending order, so I take uh, the next highest degree term, which is plus 5x. And then I take minus 3 and minus 3. If I take away 3 and then I take away another 3, I've taken away 6. So my answer will be x squared plus 5x minus 6. And now let's see what their answer is. That is their answer. Right there. Okay, number three. We're being asked to evaluate again. F of negative four plus G of negative four. I think you can probably do this by yourself. You've got F of negative four is negative 9 times negative 4 plus 17 and g of negative 4 is parentheses negative 4 squared plus 9 and we're being asked to add them All right, well, negative 9 times negative 4 is positive 36 plus 17. Is that right? Yeah, plus 17. Okay. And then negative 4 squared is negative 4 times negative 4, which is positive 16 plus 9. That's 27. Over here, 36 plus 17, 6 plus 7 is 13, 
carry the one. One plus three is four, plus one is five. 53 plus 27 is going to be three plus seven is 10. Carry the one. One plus five is six, plus two is eight. I get 80, what do they get? Oops. Oops, 78. Okay, well that'll that'll show me, won't it? Ought to do it in a calculator. All right, so we're going to do that. All right, all right. Do it in the calculator. Um, I'll make it larger in just a minute. I need to be able to see this. Well. There. Okay, negative nine, parentheses, negative four, plus 17, and then we're going to add that to parentheses, negative four, parentheses closed. The X squared button gives you your squared plus nine, and we're adding them. 78, I knew it all along. Embarrassing moments in teaching. All right. Wrong. Erase the evidence, quick. There we go. No one will ever know. Okay. Well, you see, we're all human. How did I get that mistake though? I'm gonna need to go over it again, but not now. Okay, number four. F of zero plus G of zero minus G of zero. I bet you can manage that. Let's do something new. Ah, division. Not that it's new, of course. Number six. We've got f of x equals negative 13x plus 3. And g of x equals uh, what? G of X equals X squared plus 17. And what we're being asked to do is divide F of seven by G of seven. Let's see what happens. Negative 13 times seven plus three over 7 squared plus 17. Okay. So negative 13, parentheses 7, plus 3. equals negative 88 and seven squared plus 
17 is 66. So our raw answer is negative 88 over 66. But that definitely needs to be reduced. So I take my trusty calculator and say negative 88 divided by 66. Now I can hit enter if I want to, but it's easier just to say math, frac, enter. And this reduces to negative four thirds. It's always a good idea before you give a fraction answer, if you're not sure it can't be reduced to a lower answer, to or to a more simplified answer, to go ahead and use your calculator and math frac that sucker. So I get negative four thirds. Eek. There, that's what I wanted to do. Yes, negative four thirds, thank goodness. Okay. And then we have another subtraction. We have an addition, but it's written this way. Number eight, f of x equals negative two x plus three. G of x equals x squared plus three. And then you see this monster. But all that is, is f of x plus g of x. Okay. So something else you're going to have to get used to is the new way of writing these. This is the official way that it's written in mathematics. Okay, and what would you have? You'd have negative 2x plus 3 plus x squared plus 3. We're adding them, so there aren't any sign changes. We just have to write this in descending order. So my highest degree terms comes first, and then the next highest degree, and then the constants are always the lowest degree. Three plus three will be six. And so there's your answer. Now here's a horse of a different color, number 10. You've got capital F, F of X. That means it's different from little f of X. How different? Well, it's just a matter of writing it. You have to, you have to write it in a way that agrees with the book. If they ask something with capital letters, you have to answer with capital letters. As it is, I don't think that'll really come into it here. But what I wanted to point out was what the heck is this? F minus G of zero. It's just f of zero minus g of zero.
OK, so what is F of zero? Well, you put a zero in for the X. You're going to have zero squared minus four. Minus. Well, it's probably. Eight minus zero. Now, you see, if you had kept the X's, you would have had to put parentheses around what you're subtracting, which means this really was not the best way for me to do it. I could just come over here and say, well, gee, uh, eight minus X is gonna be eight minus zero, and that's just eight. So all I'm doing is I'm gonna have negative four minus eight, and that should be negative 12. What is their answer? Whew, it's negative 12. Okay, now number 11. Looks like it's gonna be really hard and tricky. It is to the extent that it's not hard. It's one of those nasty things math writers, writers of math books throw in some time. Okay, uh, what you've got is capital F, of x equals x squared minus 3 and g of x capital g of x equals 1 minus x and oh dear oh me they're asking f over g of x which means they want f of x over g of x oh no Oh gosh, oh golly, what am I going to do? Well, x squared minus 3 over 1 minus x. And there's nothing more you can do with that. Yeah, that's the answer. since one minus X won't go into X squared minus three. I mean, you could do long division if you know how to do it, but that's not what they're asking for. This is the answer. They just wanted to throw that at you. All right, now let's do something new. Let's take a drink before we do that. Okay. Everybody who's still with me, congratulations. We are going to take a first look, unless you've done this before, a first look at co composing functions. It looks hard, but it's not. However, there is something new, and that is there's a new operation. Here we've got f of x equals negative 10x plus 15 and g of x, whatever that equals, is 5x plus 7. And here's what you're being asked to do. F raised circle G. This is an operation like adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. This is called composition. So you're actually going to learn something new today but I promise it's not real hard. It's just different. When you compose a function, you're sticking one function inside another function. 
what's hard to get is that stuff goes backwards. Okay, so if I take F circle G of X, then what I do is I take the X and I put it in G. And then I take G of X and I put it in F. So the X goes backwards to the G and the G goes backwards to the F. And this is what you get. F of G of X. And then they also ask you for, now don't give up on me yet. G of F. of X. This is different. Well, it's not different. Um, X goes backwards to the F. And then F of X goes backwards to the G. So that what you have is G of F of X. What that means is F is eating G of X and G is eating F of X. It's almost lunchtime. So let's take a look at this. F of X, and you're going to see this is not hard. F of X equals, this says, negative 10X plus 15. OK. This X is this X right here. Whatever I put in here also goes in here. Cool. All right, now. F of. G of X. Means. I'll have negative 10. times G of X plus 15. I'm just following the rules. Okay, I need more room. There. Now I have to look and see what G of X is. Right there, 5X plus 7. G of X equals 5X plus 7. Okay, well that means I'll have negative 10 times 5X plus 7 plus 15. That's all it is. Now you distribute negative 10 to the 5X and to the 7. So this will be negative 50 X minus 70 plus 15. Okay, so we'll have negative 50 X. Now minus 70 plus 15. Hmm, 70. Hey, minus 15. It's five. Okay, minus 55. And that's what F circle G of X is. So let me erase this. Now I'm going to double check that. But first I'm going to write this. F of G of X is the same thing as F circle G. Parentheses of X. Now let's see if I agree. Yes! 
All right, then they ask you for the domain. This is a polynomial. There's no denominator that might equal zero. There are no square roots. There are no fraction powers. So this is just a polynomial. What is the domain of any polynomial? It's all real numbers, or here they want it written in interval notation, which is negative infinity to infinity. Ta-da! Now we're going to do the other one. G of F of X, which is that. OK, that means we start with G of X and G of X is going, going to be like a shell, like the outer shell. Again, whatever goes in here, goes in here. Now, G circle F of X means that the X goes into the F and then the F of X goes into the G so that this is what you have. So G of, let me scroll this up, G of F of X is going to be five times f of x plus 7. And f of x is negative 10x plus 15. OK, so now. I distribute the positive 5 to the negative 10x and the positive 15. 5 times negative 10x is negative 50x plus 5 times 15 is 75 plus 7. And 75 plus 7 is 82. I hope. Yes, OK. And this is written like this. This is the answer. That is, this is the kind of answer you get when you compose. And the domain of this, this is just a polynomial. So the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. In other words, the whole x-axis, all real numbers. And you have several opportunities here. But let's do this because this is even easier. I'm sure it doesn't feel easy, but we have we have another another composition problem, but this is a different style completely. Well, no, it's not. Now that's not really a good thing to say. You'll see, you'll see what I mean. Okay, this is number 15. 
Yeah, number 15. And you'll see in a minute why I wanted to do this. F of X equals 4X plus 4. And G of X equals X squared minus 4X minus 5. Now here's what they want. Find G of F of 4. Huh? Okay. Be cool. G of F of 4. We're still going to go backwards. 4 will go into the F. And then F of 4 will go into the G. So that what I'll have is G of F of 5. Forget that 5, you didn't see it. I have no idea why I wrote it. F of 4. So G circle F of 4 is G of F of 4. So that's going to be F of 4 squared minus 4. times F of 4 yeah that's what G of X is all right we're putting F of, all right so I'm going to have F of 4 in there and F of 4 in there and then minus 5 what is F of 4 I don't know I've got to find out but as long as I know what f of x is, I can find f of 4 really easily. f of 4. Okay, 4 is going to go in for that x, so 4 times 4 plus 4. Goodness, that's a lot of 4s. 4 times 4 is 16 plus 4 is 20. And so, 20 is what F of 4 is. So G of F of 4 is going to be 20 squared minus 4 times 20 minus 5. So that's going to be 20 squared is 400 minus 80 minus 5. 400 minus 80 is 320 minus 5 equals 315. Now, let me see if just doing this in my head worked. Yes! What? Okay, excuse my enthusiasm. Stop that. Okay, now back to this. So let's look at what you did that was, oh, stop it. I have a hyperactive computer. You touch it even a little bit in it. Response. OK, up here. We were looking for F of G of X and G of F of X. We do the backwards motion. And what I had was F of G of X and G of F of X. 
what I ended up having to substitute for the X's was another polynomial. And so I, I just got a polynomial answer. But down here, instead of an X there, I had a number. And in the end, all I had to do was find out what F of four is. So I did that. And then I plugged it in for F of four. And I came up with an answer. So you see how much more, how it's easier and quicker when you're working with a number in there instead of a letter variable. OK, one more thing and we have until 1050 so I can get away with it legally. We're going to find the inverse of a function. So if my function is a set of points, well, you can look that up yourself. Let us find this. There's all sorts of stuff about inverse functions that are really important. But what you need to know are two things. I am going to do this. If you've got a function that consists of separate points, these points aren't even connected. They're actually just, just points. So here's a set of points. If we let this be f of x, You've got the point four, five. You've got the point one, negative six. Ooh, yeah. You've got the point negative five, negative four. And you've got the point five, negative five. And suppose you want to find the inverse function. Inverse functions undo each other. But we're just taking a very simplified approach right now. Technically, this is all an inverse function is. The coordinates get reversed. So instead of 4, 5, the first point's going to be 5, 4. And instead of 1, negative 6, the second point's going to be negative 6, 1. And instead of negative 5, 4, the second point's going to be negative 4, negative 5. And instead of 5, negative 5, the last point's going to be negative 5, 5. All I did was reverse the X and the Y coordinates. And that made this very simplified version of a function, f of x, which consists of four separate points, not even connected. To find the inverse function, all you do is reverse the points. Now, last thing. The very last thing. Number 19. Suppose you have a function that looks like this. And that is a function. It's a straight line. Here's how you find the inverse of that function. It is more complicated than this, a little, 
and we'll get to it later on, but this is a first look at inverse functions. It's yet another operation on functions. We switch the X and the Y, which is just what happened with those points up there. Now solve for Y. All right, we'll add three to both sides. And so over here you have X plus three equals negative three and three is zero out, so you're left with four Y. Now solve for Y by dividing by four and dividing by four. So y equals x plus 3 over 4. Well, they didn't even make you solve for y. All they wanted to do was that. Well, never mind. You got to look ahead. Yeah, OK, all right. This is all they wanted you to do. Look at that. The equation of the inverse relation. OK, later on you'll be solving for Y. All right, ladies and gentlemen, when you go home to do your homework in my math lab, what you're going to see is that the answers to this do not give you the answers to your homework. The answer of every time you do homework in my math lab, you get different numbers. OK, so this is to show you how to work the homework problems, not to give you the answers. But you know how to contact me. I mean, just go to Canvas. The syllabus is there. It has how to contact me. You can contact me in Canvas. You can contact me in your school email. Um, read the letter that you got from Barnes and Noble. Go to Canvas. Um, I also have um, a handout in there in the announcements and in the syllabus showing you how to get my math lab. And so all things considered, you have a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend and email me with any problems or just to say hi or to ask me a math question. OK, bye bye. Right, thank you. Class, class is over and um, I'm going to hang around in case there are questions. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Thanks, professor. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Professor. Thank you. You made that very understandable and very easy for me to catch on. And like I haven't been in school in 15 years, so I just wanted to appreciate you for that. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. You made my day. <laughs> OK, you have a great day. You too. Thank mm -hmm. you.